Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whenever and wherever you woo. And welcome back to the Beat Up Plan. Whoa, doing a little bit of a different video of CK2. And if this is your first video that you see on this channel, then welcome! Welcome to the Beat Up Plan. I hope that this video will be entertaining to you and will give you some interesting ideas. The fact of the matter is, is that, well, Although I do not have a lot of subs, and, uh, I do notice that, for instance, the first video of my One Province Ottomans campaign has over 2,000 viewers. I think there are a lot of people out there that are quite interested to see alternative start dates, non-bookmark start dates in CK2. So I went ahead and looked a little bit for CK2 and found starting days that I find interesting. Both for newer players as well as for people that are looking for a challenge or one that in the way of, well, setting a short term goal in 10 20 years from now, or who want re have a tough time. So, without any further ado, let's go into it. Of course, we want to hit the custom game setup button. So, first things first, if you are very, very new to the game, how do you change it? Well, you cannot change the date around Charlemagne and the Old Gods, simply not allowed. But, when it comes to 1066 and you do not even need any DLC in order to do this, without DLCs, just fine, you just won't have Old Gods and you won't have Charlemagne if you don't have those DLCs. No problem, no worries. What you can do, however, is still change the date. This changes it up by one year, this by 10 years, and this by 100 years. And that will always cost a little bit of calculation because then a lot of differences happen. But yes, that is for the years, this is for the months, and this is for the days. Now the first, well, non-bookmarked starting date that we are going to fly to is in the year 1119. But I don't even want 1119 on the 16th of October, no, I even have a very, very specific date in mind. Yes, that is what you can find if you do a little bit of research, and that research doesn't need to cost much, you just scroll around the map as you going around. And I will focus on here on Jerusalem, because if I change the day uh, one day back, the 26th of June, Jerusalem is here in a war and it won, and this is the height of the power of Catholic Jerusalem under a French king called the Ruffle, if I pronounce this correctly. So this is the height of Jerusalem, but it's still surrounded by all kinds of Muslim nations and very few allies. So this might be an interesting starting date for you. Having said that, of course, there are more interesting starting dates regarding um, religious issues. For instance, there is Kermatia. This is a, 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 I would say, a little bit tougher than the Jerusalem start. This man is Shi'i, but he is surrounded by a Sunni kingdom. What I would consider an empire, despite the fact that it is a, su uh, a kingdom level title, the Selsuk Sultanate, and otherwise he's surrounded by all kinds of, well, Indian religions, but mainly Hindu, actually, only Hindu. But yeah, this is a, an interesting start if you want a little bit more difficulty. If you want it a little less difficult, and I would think it's less difficult actually than uh, Jerusalem, I would suggest Aksum. Now this duke is Jewish and that, mm, for quite a long time throughout the game. There, you can find him back. Oh, however, 20 years from now, in 1139, he is gone. There's no more Jewish duke. But yes, these lands are Jewish. But what is the advantage here? Well, in this setup, he has actually six counties to his name. That is not that much lesser than Abyssinia, the big threat. And yes, there are other people around that, that also don't really like it, but they're single county counts and they're most of the times... Well, uh, sorry, this is of Abyssinia. They are actually not feudal governments, but they are tribal. Easy conquest. And this man, the Sunni man, will not care a darn thing if you attack over here and all the way around. This might man might come to his aid, this might man will not come to his aid because he is Shi'i. So yes, there is quite a bit of religious turmoil in this corner. Let's not forget, of course, the Nestorian island over here, but 
once again permeate throughout time, and this is a difficult start. But, fun one, and I've done it. And a lot of people have done it, starting in the story and over here. But yeah, this is another start when you want some religious conflict in your life, if you uh, will. But that is not the only religious thing that you can do in this non date. And I said this do permeates throughout uh, CK2 in the earlier dates. Another such thing that permeates throughout CK2 and even much longer is the age old dynasty of the Dulo. Really, this is a very, very old dynasty. And they are Sunni. They are Sunni and they are surrounded by pagans. There are some interesting possibilities for conquest. And they are, on the other hand, surrounded by. Kuma and the Tengri, so also that is interesting. And if you want to play a horde, but you don't want to play as a Muslim, well, there's also Kyrgyz, who is Manichian. Yes, indeed, a Zoroastrian faith in this uh, start date. And once again, also this horde and its faith permeates uh, quite a while throughout CK2. You don't need to be here. And another horde that isn't Tengri, and that might be a little bit surprising to you. Mongolia wasn't always Tengri. No. They are now currently ruled by a Buddhist who is actually at the Khitan culture. Which is a subculture and uh, I need to click this button. Yeah. Currently this looks like this because, well, the main ruler culture is shifted throughout the lands if you're of the nomad, but the only Mongol nation is this man. Which might also be a very interesting start. He is currently paying tribute towards Mongolia. That may be a very difficult start, but a nice challenge for somebody who wants something like that. Another, a little bit of a less difficult challenge, and something again of a go-in-between, just like Aksum was, is perhaps the Byzantine Empire in the starting date. Yes, they are quite weakened. Rum is here and they have been weakened. And also in the west, Hungary is now Hungary, Croatia. So it's not going to be easy conquering back all your du jour terrain. And don't even think that Sicily is an easy target because these, man, they are natural allies. Both of the whole world, both are Norman. But uh, yeah, you aren't exactly weak under the Comnensos. So also this might be something of interest for you to play with. Well, having said that, time to skip ahead oh, a little bit again to a new, non-bookmarked starting date. And, uh, well, don't you mind all the changes here? I personally think, uh, of course, some people might find them very, very interesting. I consider them okay changes, but nothing as interesting as I am flipping now to. And I'm flipping to, what's the 1st of January, 11.32. Why am I here? Well, actually, for that we go to India. We're going to this map. I would consider this once again a challenge for the hardcore CK2 persons. If I go one day back, this man is, well, a vassal of the King of Pala. Here he becomes independent. If I skip ahead ten years, well, actually eight years, he has become a king, a Bengali Hindu king instead of being a vassal of a Buddhist. I call this the Senna challenge. You have, no, eight, ten years to create the kingdom. Good luck. Having said that, there are more things that are interesting uh, about this starting date. And, uh, well, I have to, uh, I sometimes have to look at my notes, but yeah. Um, another thing that regarding religion, and, uh, well, that sometimes makes interesting storm days, is here over in Sweden. Why would I say that? Because this is all Catholic. Yes, true. But this man is still Sumanesco, this man is still Germanic, and this man is still Germanic. Note, however, that this man is already Catholic. But yes, the leaders here haven't switched yet, despite that they're the people they rule over still uh, have actually switched off the old gods. Which is a uh, quite an interesting little thing. Even more so, is, or even more so, also is, uh, well, the West Canaries, who are still, of course, in this starting date. Well, of course, they are conquered very late, if you may know CK2 and looked at this island a little bit more often. They are the last hold of the West African faith. There are some counties here left over, but nobody there believes anymore in the West African gods. So also that may be of interest to you. 
Um, speaking of a little bit of religious turmoil, and as I skipped ten years ahead in order to show you the Senna challenge over here. Well, do you see this man? Yeah, well, in four years from now, Sicily makes a bold move and incorporates it into their kingdom, or actually they conquer it. But they leave the duke in power. This is a Sunni duke beneath a Catholic king of Sicily. And Sicily conquers even more here. They're, Sicily will conquer more in history. Another interesting thing, and well, then a little bit more of a hardcore challenge than being a Sunni duke beneath a Catholic king, and would be Kiva. Why is that? Well, this young boy just took to the throne <clears throat> a few years ago. Let me show you that. Yeah. Okay, that's a bit annoying that it does that. I don't know why, but here is his father. 1142. A very old man. And then he dies and he leaves his boy, a Kitan Buddhist, ruling over, well, <clears throat> Turkish Sunni people. And he's a nomad, and the rest of these are, of course, of the, uh, um, Iktar system. Sorry, I had to think there for a few seconds. Sorry, sometimes that happens, that I have to think. Rarely is needed, but sometimes it is. So, um, having you set that date, let's skip ahead a little bit. Do you see the Selshuk over here? Yeah, they're quite powerful, but the Selshuk, well... They were actually even mightier, they were all up in here. But there is also the year of their collapse. And that is in 11... 57? No? Sorry, 1158. I am sorry, I was one year off. <laughs> My mistake. 1158 and the Selshuk collapsed. There are still all of the Selshuk dynasty over here. Um, Selshuk, 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 all Selshuk, but... The big empire, oh by the way, this is not a Selshuk and neither is this guy, but yeah, they have collapsed and the Ghaznavid is now what is more or less left as, uh, well, sort of not. This also interesting releases the Abbasid and the Abbasid is a dynasty that used to be the emperors over in this region, ruling as, uh, well, having the king of Egypt for instance as a vassal. Perhaps you like that challenge to get the Abbasid back into power. We'll see if you can reunite the Selshuk. It is all up to you. I do believe that there are some people here with a claim, if I remember correctly, because, well, one year ahead of it, the Selshuk still live. But yeah, they collapse in 1158. Then let's go a little bit further again to 1192. And this is again a very specific start date that I am looking for. I don't, I'm not looking here for the 1st of January. I'm looking for the 3rd of May. So let's skip there. April... the 3rd of May. Did you see the change? No? Well, let's go back then a little bit. What the? Yes, this is of England, and on the 3rd of May, Cyprus gets its independence. So that is quite an interesting thing, I would say. Another interesting thing in the region is Georgia. Georgia over here is about at the height of its power uh, in CK2, and it has a few uh, neighbors that it can attack quite easily. Well, then again, they might get help because the Ayubid is Sunni, and these lands are all also Sunni. But Alania isn't. But then again, there is no claim. And there is rum, of course, as well. There are some interesting things you might want to do here with, also, by the way, a female ruler. Quite an interesting start, a female ruler. We have some... Some power, but not on crazy, so... Then there is the height of England within France. Perhaps you want to again bring back France from the dead. Well, not dead, but from the brink of disaster. After all, look at it. it, it's not really healthy. And I do believe also, yeah, they have some Kafar problems down in the south. Having said that, actually, as I looked at the religion map mode, well, I don't know why I switched away from it, I also noticed in this time day that these are the last two Slavic counties alive. Yes, these are ruled by Catholics. So, that is, well... Switching over to Slavic is going to be extremely difficult, so I would suggest you use the ruler designer. 
but in principle you can start as a Slavic man within the Holy Roman Empire in that case and you will rule over the last two Slavic counties there are. That might be also an interesting start for you. Also in this starting day is a very very young Bulgaria and it now exists for eight years by the Assen dynasty. The Byzantine Empire is much stronger and they have all kinds of de jure claims on you, but even us in Dynasty, if we would skip ahead 10 years, for instance, they live, they thrive. Trust me, they they don't even just attack Comania and win. If we go, for instance, to the Latin Empire, oh, well, you see that Bulgaria actually pin. And if we go even further, and I, I do need to skip back a wee little bit here. Um, okay, that's... No, I'm doing it wrong. Bulgaria... Ah, there we go. That's the wrong date. You see that Bulgaria expands quite a bit. So that what I would consider the Van Assen uh, challenge. Another challenge that you can see and also has been featured on my channel is the Teutonic Order. The Teutonic Order didn't start out here on the Baltic Sea, what a lot of people might see as the truth because, well, they certainly did a lot better than they did here, but the first county that was ever given to them was in Hungary. And Hochmeister Hermann I have played as well as another, in another, uh, well, series is set on my channel. Another possible interesting starting date, and now we're skipping by a little bit further dates because, well, I've been talking out of my ass for so long that you may get annoyed by me and I don't want to give away all my good little secrets, is around 1155. Do you see what happened here? Yes, Sicily breaks away from the Holy Roman Empire as other little states. Now, if you go ahead and go a little further in the starting date, you would see even more small little counties breaking away from the Holy Roman Empire that are in the Italian lands. But this is the start of what I would say the Italian freedom. Pick a nation here, whatever you want. Well, the Pope is also quite mighty, and well, I actually also use the Pope at near this height of a power. Another series on my channel from Il Papa. But yes, there's also Ancona, for instance, as a republic. Which you can actually uh, well, not play as because it's unfortunately not a merchant republic. But yes, that is also dependent on some single county counts and what have you not. Some of which you can't play once again because unfortunately merchant republic. But trust me, just like you can play the Pope or the Teutonic Order, you can also play them. them. You just need to finagle a little bit with console commands. But there's also for instance the ins uh, independent Duke of Lombardy if you don't want to use the console. Another interesting little thing is over here is Navarra. This is about the height of Navarra's power because they have inherited lands in France. Don't expect to hold these lands a long time because they are definitely going to be... You're going to be attacked by France, but that might be an interesting thing for you. And you are actually a French king on the nation, of course, of the Basque, Navarra. And, um, well, Aragon also has a little piece in there, but that's already much longer in history. Still, still, could be interesting. And you're probably starting to get sick of hearing me say it, but another interesting stone date, as is featured on my channel, and which may have also led you to this video, is of course... 1299, and you can start in this on the 1st of January. Why is that? Well, actually, I can already show you. This is the start of the Ottoman Empire. On the 1st of January on 1299, Sultan Osman of Ottoman Sultanat declared his independence of Rum. And then, well, as the last starting date for this video, and, uh, well, a little bit of a weird one, because, well, these are non book star marked starting dates. Things get sometimes a little funky in CK2, and the last one starting date that needs a very specific date is in 1305. And what do I want in 1305? I want a June 1305. And boom, there you already see it. The 21st, it happens. Oh, that's our um, months, my mistake. The 21st, it happens. And yeah, now this is what is weird about it. If you skip from different time zones, it happens a little different. That's why I said, like, it's, it's kind of funky how this works. Now they're separated, now they're returning. You saw a moment ago, voila, and now it's again Bohemia with this little piece of... It goes a little funky, because even if you play as this boy, the Pemisnit, which is the dynasty that ruled over Bohemia, he is supposedly an independent ruler of Bohemia, Hungary, and 
Poland as it looks, and also pieces of Croatia. But what is then this light orange... Uh, sorry, light pinkish U. And actually, when we saw in a moment ago, you had everything. Yeah, I don't know, because when you go in-game, all of a sudden, the pinkish U is an independent Croatia under this lady. So, I don't know. And you fall under the Holy Roman Empire. So... Yeah, Paradox may need to fix this, which is such a shame because, wow, that is an inheritance if I ever saw one. Arpat line. This was the last Arpat king and unfortunately it only has three living members, which is why I think it came to this boy because this lady is a Van Halsberg, but somewhere in here is a... Well, you have to look it up. I think there's somewhere, or perhaps it was through his father. Somewhere there was a line towards a pot, I believe, and that's why it happens, but... Yeah, that is the last time date that I am going to reveal to you, and uh, I'm going to bore you with. And by the way, just one more thing to note. Bulgar, I already said it, throughout history, the Dulo Dynasty, even though they have been run over by the Golden Horde, they still exist. Try to stay this long as a nomad and try to survive, eh? I already showed you when they start, or actually when they are already around, and that's not even their starting date, because the Dulo line, as I said, holy heck are you an old line. They are already kings over here of Bulgaria, and later on they get Volga Bulgar. Well, I hope that this gave you some interesting ideas, perhaps you even enjoyed listening to me, well, blabbing about all these kind of things and things that I find interesting perhaps possible starting dates and if you do well perhaps you want to subscribe or see what I have done for instance as I well did in some of these suggested starting dates for instance the Ottomans the Teutonic Order or indeed Il Papa and if not well then I still say I thank you for watching and wherever you go remember great peril yields great beauty <laughs>